Hello Neverwinter, I have been playing around with Warlock builds for the new mod and I have come up with something that I'm going to call the Dragon Slayer build it takes four damage companions plus a dragon damage ring It is assuming that we're running a tutor and a flapjack. And it nearly, very nearly caps all the stats. Got a couple of uh, half a percent here and there, but it's close enough as far as I'm concerned. There we go. Obviously. With Mystic Aura running as well, that'll only be about 0.4 of a percent off. So accuracy will only be about half percent off. At the minute I do have pack tactics equipped just to show the combat advantage, but we are obviously overcapped on that as well. Uh what are we using? Okay, we're using the critical strike helm. I did play about a bit with the accuracy helm, but well it, it just wasn't needed really. Yeah, some some of these newer um, wild space ones could potentially be viable, but I, well, mostly I can't be bothered going to the effort to get them for this build. So, <laughs> um, since late amulet, this is expensive. I only bought this just to just for this build really, but this will work just as well. The shroom would, and if you don't want to buy anything, you can always drop back to the middle are but you will have to drop a lot of accuracy. I suppose if you're using the Yeah, if you're using the Mithlar you could put the accuracy helm on, but then I mean you're starting to really reduce your item level. Illustrates beauty. Combat advantage, very good ring. Uh there's one from MGR somewhere that gives combat advantage as well. I do not have one of those on this scene at the minute, but it does exist, so you could switch that one in instead. Although I believe that one's a bit less reliable, but you do get an extra percentage of uh, combat advantage. Uh, this is the Dragon Slayer ring from the Dragon Slayer campaign. Um, low item level, 10% damage against dragons. Don't really know what the new dungeon's going to be like, but if there is a single target battle with a dragon this will be a good ring to use. Also using the chest piece from the Dragon Slayer campaign. Mostly for the accuracy. Well, the combat advantage, uh, combat advantage as well. When you see what companions are running you'll understand why. Uh, the AP gain gloves because why not? I mean, there's not nothing else much really we'd want to run. Yeah. Uh, using the Moon Dancer weapons. So if we look at these, and I'm not a fan of these uh, health point differential bonuses, but the maximum potential for this one is 8.5%. Uh, 
versus the newer ones. Maximum damage potential here is 6% uh, when you're not in wild space. So, I don't know, it's, it's probably a lot closer on this one than it looks like, especially if it is a proper single target one. Because that actually takes quite a while for those percentage differential ones to come in. But, I don't know, maybe play around. If you haven't had both sets, play around with them, see what you want to do. Uh, if you've got these, you could put those on, and I would save you having to use any squash soup as a buff. Or to allow you to uh, move things around a bit, but you don't really need to move things around a bit. I was having a little play with a non Raptor variant of this build, which is quite interesting. That could. You could have run potentially five damage companions, but that needs a bit more work. Uh, second part of the Scintillate Slash, obviously, you can use different. Any combination of these things trigger the bonus, and it's the bonus that we want. So, we get the recharge speed, we get the accuracy. It's got good uptime. Uh, <laughs> resorted to using this shirt again. If you had something like a Portobello in the group, as well as, uh, as the Tutor and the Flapjack, you could probably swap this out for something a bit more modern and up-to-date. Um, the Mar this Marilith mask is actually a pain in the ass to get up to Mythic, but we're just basically using high high open level artifacts with good stats, you know. Uh, second part of the weapon set. Uh, these are these are very. There's some classes these wouldn't work on. The reason why they work okay on the Warlock is because we get our daily back so fast and it lasts for so long that it doesn't matter if we pop our daily as soon as we get it most of the time because it lasts for like 20 seconds. So, and we can get it back in about 20 seconds as well. So it's... I know some people don't like this sort of boot, but it, w it will work, provided you use it correctly I suppose <laughs> uh, just artifacts, random artifacts, good artifacts and again like I keep saying this 25 action point gain on a critical strike is the best AP gathering set of pants in the game so far Okay, enhancements. Obviously, we're running the Celestials. I mean, it should scale with Mythics as well. I mean, it should scale all the way down the chain, but obviously, if you go too low, then you won't actually be able to get into the dungeon, so, you know. Um, probably don't even need that power one, but if I put anything else in there, it's just going to overcap everything and make the stats look weird, so. Stick that one in there for the Forte. Because why not? Um, we're going for action point gain. Uh, we don't really need the recharge speed on the warlock, but you know whatever you want to use, I suppose. Celestial lightning flash. This is over twenty stats in one enchantment. Far and away the best thing you can run on a DPS at the minute. Devil's Precision. Uh, pick these up from the appointment store or wherever. And this is on the Dragon Slayer overloads from the Stronghold. I think they might have come out with some new Dragon Slayer overloads, but. These ones from the Stronghold are probably the best. Powers wise, same standard setup for a Warlock. I was actually having a little play with the Hand of Blight. 
before I started recording this video, but um, I think I'd still take Hellish Rebuke over it. And this goes with the animation cancelling. Hellish Rebuke in combination with No Pity No Mercy, with the animation cancelling, you can get a full set, uh, set of Soul Sparks back in about three seconds, which means you can just have a consistent animation cancel, soul scorch, boom boom boom, keep re uh, reducing your recharge speed. I mean I don't know what it's going to be like in this dungeon, but provided you can stay close to the dragon or be close to the dragon, I mean Blade of Vanquish Armies is probably our best single target power Besides, obviously, killing flames. So, yeah, I mean, it's just the nature of the Warlock at the minute. We are pretty much tired to using these three powers in all situations. Uh, Tyrannical Curse, obviously, this is our daily. It's the only one we really need to bother using. And we can get it back really fast. Sometimes I'll use Brood of Hado like in the MTOS first boss. I might use this because of the stun effect sometimes. But yeah, generally tyrannical. Uh, so okay, we've got the Deadly Curse versus Dust to Dust. And it's quite a debated on this. I mean, I would generally say Deadly Curse because that 25 magnitude damage, whilst not huge, is consistent. Whereas a 5% increase to damage, if it gets added to the same damage pool as the rest of your damage increases, means that it's not actually a 5% increase in damage because it's a diminishing return factor. So the more sources you have, the less the new sources actually contribute to the increase in the damage. Okay, so <laughs> the Soul Puppet is pretty much useless, but it does trigger other things, which is why we keep it on, right? Okay, so we won't, there is, we choose the Warlock's Curse because we're not going to be removing it often enough for that to, for the 85 magnitude damage from removing it to equal to more damage than the Warlock's Curse. And again, this is more stacking damage or risky investment. Creep and Death, they recently did fix. Did a video on it a little while ago about the bug. I will generally go for Creep and Death over Executioner's Gift because this is another one of those uh, differential health things and you don't get the full benefit from this until the enemy's practically dead so it's just I don't know, I really don't like the health differential uh, things And it's kind of kind of a personal choice thing, this, but generally you'd want to be in control of when this happens rather than just have your idiot soul puppet just doing whatever it wants, you know. Okay, so I did spend some time burning in some boons here. I'll explain these master boons. The rest of them are just, you know, whatever, but... Uh, Bloodlust, nice bit of action points. These two here proc a hell of a lot more than they, than it seems to su uh, suggest it would, especially on the Warlock with the animation cancelling. So this Life Lessons gives you a nice little heal. And it actually contributes quite a lot of damage as well. It's uh, pretty significant. 
And this one, I've been in uh, some Tom runs, some trial runs, where the rest of the DPS are getting nearly one shot, and I'm taking 30, 40 percent less damage, or that's what it appears to be. And I'm pretty sure it's down to this master boot. These two on the warlock actually get triggered by summoning the soul puppet, which I'm pretty sure is a bug, and a lot of people don't seem to realise, but you can proc these yourself just by going through your encounter rotation. Which, when I do get around to doing a proper no wrap the build for a proper end game, this will factor into it because we get 6% free power from that. But just in the normal course of anything, we'll be getting that recharge speed just by going through our encounter rotation. We don't need to rely on anybody healing us, because if we've got that soul puppet being summoned, this will trigger. Uh, yeah, just for whatever statue you need there. Again, always go Awareness. Awareness is the primary defensive stat in any trial situation. And for his eye sickness is usually a good idea, especially, especially in tough dungeons. Obviously I've got the Flapjack summoned here because the build relies on the Flapjack and the Tutor, so might as well be me running the Flapjack. Right, so we're actually, we, we have got the raptor in, because we have to. Um, recently this, this dragon hunter has been massively bumped up in price. You may notice that this build is called a tier map build. Now we couldn't actually run, well we could. We could run this, it, the dragon's bane in tier map, but it ended up generally less damage because of all the extra things in Tiamat that weren't dragons. So it ended up being more beneficial overall to run the Neverwinter Knight. But if this new one is an actual single target against a, against a single dragon, then the Dragon's Bane will be viable. But what we have also managed to do is slot in the Celestial Lion's Presence. So this is not as effective as, say, the Neverwinter Night or something like that. But it does have a relatively good uptime. Now that... <laughs> this line is incredibly expensive at the minute. I think it's run into about 2 mil, so... You might, yeah, you might want to put something else in there, but it's the only damage companion that I'm aware of that will actually go into the utility slot. So that's uh, that's why it's there. Obviously, the dungeon hasn't been released yet, so I don't know if it's even going to be that effective. But um, same as always, perfect vision goes in the enhancement slot because it is slightly unreliable, and we don't want to be missing out on any of the important stuff like combat advantage or crit severity. Uh, yeah, we've got pack tactics equipped at the minute, but I'd probably usually be running Ferocity. Or Providence might actually be an interesting interaction now that we've got the Golden Lion equipped. But generally, Ferocity uh, or Quick Action, wherever that is. Yeah, so that would help us get our daily back quicker. Not that we really need it, but could be nice to have a little bump. Um, I did not, <laughs> I did not go to the full effort of actually pulling all my DPS uh, insignias down and off my wizard. So these uh, <laughs> these insignias are just whatever I happen to have lying around on the warlock. Uh, Two Warlords Motivations, 
To be completely honest, since we're on the flapjack, we probably don't need those. It probably make more sense to switch one of these to the tacticians. But that's something we can do later. Uh, Assassin's Covenant, Executioner's Covenant, just for some extra stats. I don't even think we really need them. We could probably balance it out a bit more and then put something like a Lionheart's Preservation in. Uh, over here we've got the Golden Wars on again. Like I've said before, it's just the smoothest animation. Um, I don't actually have the Big Speed's hand, so I haven't been able to test that, but some people swear by that one as well. Just any single target, 3000 magnitude thing. Uh, yeah, that's about it for this one. Obviously, I don't actually know what the dungeon's going to be like, but this will hopefully give you some idea of something you can do. Oh, there is also... Do I have one of this one? There are some belt items which we used to use in Tiamat. Such as this. This is a only an epic one, but they go up to legendary and there is a mythic one as well. They were very limited editions, so they are insanely expensive at the minute. So don't feel like you need to get hold of any of these. Um, just be aware that they exist. Uh, the best we're using are... They have run out. Uh, but <laughs> There was Squash Soup, Potency, Ratatouille, and Sun Lord's Gift Elixirs. There's also additional buffs we use on Dragons. Like these... There's newer versions of these that you pick up from the Dragon Slayer campaign. But these buffs run in addition to the event food stuff and the stronghold stuff. So you could put these on top of those for even more damage and damage resistance. And that's about it. Uh, just some ideas for how to build the Warlock for the next mod. Obviously, I don't actually know what it's going to look like, but hope this helps. Uh, if you like the video, send it a like, and if you like a lot of videos, put in a subscribe. See you later, guys. Thanks for watching.